similar to what we did for phi growth below, in this video we'll find the equation for phi growth above. Let's start with definitions. We'll say f of g of k is equal to phi growth of token y at some time tk. And we'll also define f of a to be equal to phi growth of token y above some tick i. We'll graph an example of phi growth zigzagging tick i. The horizontal axis represents tick. If we decrease the tick, then this means that the price decreases. And if we increase the tick to the right, then this means that the price also increases. Remember for the vertical axis, we'll represent phi growth. As the current tick moves from left to right and right to left, this means that the price changed. This also means that there was a swap, so phi growth will grow. So over time, you'll see that the phi growth will zigzag from left to right, right to left, and also move upwards. As the phi growth moves upward over time, we'll calculate f of a. Let's begin by imagining that at some time t of 0, the phi growth crossed tick i. We'll label this as f of g0. And let's say that the current tick is somewhere over here. And let's say that the current phi growth will be somewhere over here. Now the question is, what would f of a be after t of 0 and before t of 1? Again, recall that f of a is phi growth of token y above tick i. So what we want to find is the height of this red rectangle. This represents the current phi growth above tick i. Okay, so what is the height of this red rectangle? Well, we know that the starting height will be f of g of 0. How about the ending height? Well, the ending height will be f of g, the current phi growth. So the difference will be the height, which is f of g minus f of g 0. Moving on, let's say that at time t1, the phi growth crossed below tick i. So now the current tick is below tick i, and we want to calculate what is the phi growth above at this time. So at t1, what is phi growth above? Well, again, what we need to calculate is the height of this red rectangle. Well, the height of this red rectangle is f of g1 minus f of g0. At time t2, let's say that the current tick crossed over tick i, so now it is above tick i. In this case, what would f of a be? Well, what we need to do now is find the height of this red rectangle, and then also add the height of this red rectangle. We know what the height of this red rectangle is, so all we have to do is calculate the height of this red rectangle. Well, the current tick is over here, and the current phi growth will be over here. If we minus the current phi growth from f of g of 2, which will be over here, we get the height of this red rectangle. Take the height of this red rectangle, and then add it with the height of this rectangle, then we'll get the current phi growth above. So at time t2, f of a will be equal to f of g, the current phi growth, minus f of g2, which you see over here. So f of g minus f of g2 will be the height of this red rectangle. And then to this we add f of g1 minus f of g0, the height of this red rectangle. At time t3, let's say that the current tick crossed below tick i. And again, let's compute f of a. Well, we know that the sum of the height of these rectangles has not changed. So all we have to do is replace this f of g with f of g3. So f of a at time t3 will be equal to f of g3. This f of g3 replaces the f of g from above. And then the rest of the equation are the same. This equation again represents the sum of the height of these two rectangles. Lastly, let's say that at time t4, the current tick went above tick i. The phi growth when it crossed tick i will label it as f of g4. And now what is f of a? Well, what we need to do again is to the previous sum of the height of the red rectangles, we'll need to add this height. Well, this height will be f of g minus f of g4. So f of a at time t4 will be equal to f of g minus f of g4, the height of this rectangle. And to this, we add the previous sums height of this and height of this, which you can see over here, f of g3 minus f of g2 plus f of g1 minus f of g0. Now that we computed f of a for different times, we can now come up with an equation. So similar to what we did for phi growth below, we'll define this equation. What this equation is describing is we're taking these terms and then taking the absolute value of them. So what we're going to do next is we're going to rewrite this in terms of f of o of n and f of g. Okay, so let's write f of a in terms of f of o of n. So on the left, I have f of a from the example above, and on the right, we'll write f of a in terms of f of o. Let's start with f of a 
at time t0. At time t0, we have minus f of g0. This is equal to minus f of o of 0. And to this, we add f of g, so we have plus f of g. At time 1, we have f of g1 minus f of g0. We know that the phi growth is always increasing, so f of g1 minus f of g0 is greater than or equal to 0. So rewriting this in terms of f of o of 1, we get that this expression is simply equal to f of o 1. At time t2, we have this part equal to f of o 2. Now, if we evaluate the terms minus f of g2 plus f of g1, we know that f of g2 is greater than or equal to f of g1, so these two terms are either negative or equal to 0. And we also know that f of g0 is either negative or equal to 0. So when we add non-positive number with a non-positive term, then the sum of it is also non-positive. So to f of all 2, we add a minus sign. And we also have a f of g2 term here, so we add f of g. At time t2, f of a will be equal to minus f of all 2 plus f of g. At time t3, similar to what we did for t1, these terms will simply be equal to f of all 3. You can check the math for yourself that f of g3 minus f of g2 is greater than or equal to 0, and f of g1 minus f of g0 is greater than or equal to 0. And for time t4, f of a will be equal to minus f of o of 4 plus f of g. You can check that these terms are negative, and we know that f of o of 4 is always greater than or equal to 0 since we're taking the absolute value, and we need to turn this into negative, so we put a minus sign. And then the extra term f of g, we add it. So at time t4, f of a will be equal to minus f of o of 4 plus f of g. This is similar to the pattern that we saw for phi growth below. Okay, with this in mind, let's now derive the equation for f of a in terms of f of o. Okay, let's find the equation for f of a in terms of f of o and f of g. We will define i of c to be equal to the current take at time t, where this time will be between t of k and less than t of k plus 1. And we're going to find the equation for f of a. Now this equation splits into two parts. When the current tick i of c is greater than or equal to tick i, and when the current tick i of c is less than tick i. Let's start with the case when the current tick i of c is greater than or equal to tick i. Looking at this graph, the time current tick i of c is greater than tick i, this means that the current tick will be, be here, here, or here. At time t0, we know that the current tick i crossed above tick i, and at time t1, it went below tick i. So, so between time t0 and t1, current tick will be above tick i. And at this point in time, f of a is described by this equation. The next time that the current tick i of c crosses above tick i is over here. At time t2, the current tick crosses above tick i, and at time t3, it goes below tick i. So in between time t2 and t3, current tick will be over here, and f of a between time t2 and t3 is described by this equation. And lastly, in this example, the last time that the current tick crosses above tick i is over here. And this is after time t4. After time t4, f of a is described by this equation. So on this table, the time when current tick i of c is above tick i is either this, this, or this equation. We see that all three of these equations have the form minus f o of something plus f of g. At time t0, this something will be 0. At time t2, this something will be 2. And at time t4, this something will be 4. So now we can generalize this. When the current tick i of c is greater than or equal to tick i, we know that f of a will be equal to f of g minus f o of k. This is an equation that we generalize by looking at this, this, and this equation. Okay, how about when the current tick i of c is less than tick i? Okay, going back to the graph, the first place that we see current tick i of c less than tick i is over here. The next time we see it is between over here. And the last time we see it is over here. In the first place, phi growth above f of a will be equal to 0. How do I know this? At this point, there is no red rectangles, so the height of the sum of the red rectangles is also equal to 0. How about at this point? At this point, time is between t1 and t2. Between time t1 and t2, 
f of a is described by this equation. This represents the height of this red rectangle. In the last place in this example where the current tick i of c is less than tick i is over here. This corresponds to time between t3 and t4. And between t3 and t4, f of a is described by this equation, f o of 3. And f o of 3 represents the sum of the height of this rectangle and this red rectangle. To summarize, when the current tick i of c is less than tick i, f of a was either this or this equation. We can see a pattern here that when the current tick i of c is less than tick i, it takes on the form of f of o of something, which you see over here, and again f of o of something, which you see over here. This something is indexed by time. So at time t3, this something is equal to 3, and at time t1, this something is equal to 1. Okay, so let's summarize what we observed so far. When the current tick i of c is less than i, f of a will be equal to f of o of k. This is what we observed for here and here. So we now have all of the equations that are needed to calculate the fee growth inside two ticks, f of b, f of a, and f of o. Starting from the next video, I'll explain how to initialize f of o so that the equation for fee growth inside is always correct.